The man lies under the piano and orders the woman to lift the hem of her skirt, thus revealing the torn stockings inside. With the pleasant sound of the piano, his fingers unconsciously reach for the hole and caresses the woman's bare skin. And then his fingers kept swirling around inside the hole. It was a secret deal between the two of them. Ada could have the piano if she allowed Baines to touch her while she played. Ada would receive a key for every touch she received like the one she had just received. Take off her coat and touch her arm to get the keys. Lying next to him, you can get five keys. Once Ada has all the keys, that deal is over. Ada has never spoken since she was six years old. The reason for this is not even clear to her. Her father had told her it was a dark curse. One day it would destroy her, but that still didn't change Ada's decision. She conveyed all the emotions she wanted to express through the notes of the piano. She also struck a chord with a composer and gave birth to a new life. Unfortunately, her husband died at a young age, leaving her and daughter to live with each other. Her family then arranged a new marriage for Ada, and so the mother and daughter came to Stewart's Island. This man had heard about Ada's situation but didn't mind. He thought that since God liked the silent things, he could accept everything. But Ada and her daughter waited all night on the shore without waiting for each other. Until the next morning, Stuart and his team arrived in a hurry due to the long journey and the lack of manpower. Stuart decided to abandon the heavy piano. This led to his first disagreement with Ada. Ada wanted to move the piano rather than the kitchenware and clothes. But Stuart still stressed that the road was heavily wooded and muddy. They needed to worry about themselves more than the bulky scrap metal. Ada just watched as the piano was left all alone on the beach. Stuart doesn't understand Ada's obsession, but it's not just the piano he's giving up. It's Ada's hopes for the marriage, but Stuart is not a bad person. He knew Ada was still wary of him, so he never had a sex with Ada. If he had to go on a business trip, he would report it to her in advance with a sense of guilt. But Ada didn't care about it. She didn't even raise her eyes. After Stuart left, mother and daughter found their neighbor Baines and asked him to show them the way back to the coast. Baines wanted to refuse. But he couldn't resist their plan agreed. Ada played the piano all day with her face to the sea. Her daughter danced all day long. Days, who had never read a book, was deeply moved by such a scene for the first time. Although he didn't know anything about music. But he knew that Ada's mind must be happy. So the next day Baines offered to trade eight acres of land with Stuart for the piano. His only condition was that Ada herself would teach him how to play the piano. Stuart, of course, agreed to the deal, which was a sure thing. Ada was furious when she found out she would not allow any other vulgar person to touch her piano or desecrate her pursuit of art. But she is forced by her husband's orders to compromise. Only it's not what she thought it would be. Baines, despite his rude appearance, was a great lover of the piano. He even had the piano tuned in advance. This makes Ada feel a little bit better about him. What surprised Ada even more was that Baines didn't intend to touch the piano. He only wanted to listen to Ada solo. He just listened to him quietly. But when Ada came the next day, Baines was no longer satisfied with just the enjoyment of his years. The man approached her from behind and caressed the woman's hand on the piano. Ada was so frightened that she immediately withdrew her hand. Two keys. Strangely enough, Ada stopped resisting after hearing this. She let the man's hand slide down her arm to her back. And it all started with a deal. She could take the piano if she met one of Bane's demands when she played it. Ada gets a key for coming to his house once. Ada hesitated for a long time before agreeing. Her love of music was clearly being her, but she also had one condition attached, and that was the number of black keys on the piano, so that she could come to Bane's house half as often. So from that day on, Ada would find excuses to send her daughter away every time she came to Bane's house. And as she came more and more often, Bane's demands became more and more excessive. At first, he only asked Ada to lift the hem of her skirt, showing off her slim little legs. Then he made her take off her top to feel his gentle touch. He even violently ripped Ada's clothes off and kissed her neck. He couldn't restrain his desire, so he tempted Ada with tinkies and asked her to lie with him in bed. That day they met openly and had an intimate skin-to-skin -skin encounter. Shortly after, there was a party in town. Stuart brings Ada with him. Ada intentionally and unintentionally resisted Bane's approach at the party. She also deliberately accepted her husband's intimate behavior in front of Bane's. This hurt Bane's a lot. He lost heart and returned the piano to Ada. Before the end of the lesson, when Ada asked him why he was doing this, Baines only explained that he had had enough of playing. These days with Ada, he always felt like a John, but that wasn't what he wanted. He wanted Ada to really care about him. He didn't want to threaten Ada with the piano, and that scares Stuart, who arrives. 
He mistakenly thinks Baines is trying to break the contract and take back the land he traded for. He didn't feel relieved until he received Baines' assurance. I'm sure that I want it myself. It was more to your wife than I gave it. Ada should have been very happy to get things back on track. But she hesitated. She went home and didn't want to touch the kiss. She just stared silently in Bane's direction and didn't say anything. Ada knew she needed those staring eyes behind her. She needed that unwavering love. Ada started to fantasize about the man's full skin by touching the keys. She even came to Bane's house alone the next day despite her daughter's objections. Bane saw Ada's unsolicited visit and took the initiative to show his love. He missed Ada a lot. Whenever he thought of Ada, he could not do anything. This made him miserable. He said that if Ada didn't think the same way, she should leave. Then he even opened the door of his room voluntarily. Ada saw this and slapped Bane's heart. How could she come with no feelings when she was bound by the world? The two of them embraced each other in a loving embrace. But all this was clearly seen by Ada's husband outside the door. The man peeked through the doorway and saw the exciting scene in the room. The woman who was kissing someone else was his wife. Stuart could never have imagined that the woman who was so cold to him was now in the room with another man, full of affection, but his pride wouldn't let him go in. He had to let the two of them indulge late into the night. He went home at night and still didn't tell the truth. Stuart just gazed silently in Ada's direction and felt lost. He was a man, but he'd been in bed with his wife for so long without ever really touching her body. Instead, his wife was having an intimate relationship with an uneducated man. This is really a bit humiliating, so he decided to abandon his old gentlemanly ways and forcefully took Ada's body, but his daughter's cries brought Stuart to his senses. He did not continue to violate his wife, but afterwards, he nailed the doors and windows shut and forbade Ada to go out alone. Ada's inner desire was at its peak under the restraint. During the day, she would kiss herself in the mirror. At night, she would sleepwalk to the piano to express her feelings through intense music. As time went on, Ada realized that she couldn't go on like this. She began to try to get closer to her husband, although Stuart knew that Ada was not sincere with him. But the next day, he took down the confines of his home. He wanted to trust Ada one more time and give them both a chance to start over. Perhaps with time, you might come to like me. But what Stuart didn't expect was, as soon as he left the house, Ada immediately took down a piano key and gave it away as a token of affection. Stuart is furious when he sees it and rushed home with an axe. He hated his wife for her betrayal. He also hated that his trust had been betrayed over and over again. Even though he knew the answer, he continued to ask Ada if she still loved Baines. Ada still didn't say anything, so he cut off her finger with a straightforward knife. Stuart regained his composure that night. He tried to win back his wife's heart one last time, but Ada silently told him verbally, Let me go. Let Baines take me away. Let him save me. Stuart is desperate when he hears these words. He took the shotgun and found Baines in his sleep. If he could do it all over again, he would want everything to go back to the day Ada came to the island and was happy. But there are no whiffs in life. He knew that no matter how much he hurt Ada, he would never get her heart. Instead of this, he would rather let Ada and Bangs go. This is also a kind of relief for Stuart. The day Ada left the island, the overweight piano was once again disliked by everyone. But Bangs insisted on taking the piano with him. He knew that the piano was Ada's life. Ada stopped being stubborn during the difficult journey and decided to give up the piano. She guides the crowd to push the piano into the sea. But at the last moment of the piano's journey into the sea, Ada put her foot into the trap. She also fell into the sea with the piano. She did not resist and let death take its course. But just as Ada was about to lose consciousness, she suddenly broke free and returned to the surface of the sea. Soon after, Ada still thinks about the piano that sank into the sea. She thought about how it would have ended if she hadn't swum to the surface. The silence of the ocean floor is like a strange lullaby that carries her into her dreams. And so the film The Piano Wins. Ada is a lonely, introspective woman. When she lands on the wet beach, she seems out of place on the island. No matter how hard her husband tries, he cannot feel the pain that caused her to lose her piano. She is a lonely flower. Her most beautiful fragrance is unnoticed and unappreciated. She finally came across her piano again on the beach at dusk. Yet she brought another person a deep touch. Ada could not escape from this love after all. Because the sound of the piano is the only language for the lonely woman. And this man is her only true listener.